Hello, hello. <laughs> um, now we have to look at a very old Nikkor lens. This time it is a Nikkor S Auto, uh, 50mm 1.4. And it's um, really old, but it needs some cleaning of the lens. So, uh, well, if you look at this now, well, it looks okay. I have this yellow radioactive, radioactive uh, thorium coating, I guess it is. But um, if we look at the, yeah, it's a really used lens. I was, um, I was actually trying to to take off the retaining ring, which is on the back here that uh, have the um, that hold the uh, aperture ring in place, but um, I didn't get it. I mean, somebody else has been into this lens before, and uh, was not that luck lucky. So, uh, well, but it's not the case. In this uh, in this film, but let's have a have a look how it the lens elements actually looks. I use a torch, and uh, if you see possible, there's a lot of dust in this uh, lens. Is it the back or the front or the middle element? I don't know. There are actually seven no uh, seven lenses in in five groups. So, uh, but there is some possibility. Yeah, but let's have a look inside. Um, we could begin with the mount here, and there's something you have to remember. There are five screws, one here close to the lock, here. The second one, you should not unscrew it, because it holds the spring for the aperture pin. So if I do so, let's put it on 16, I will move the aperture pin, and the spring goes from here, from this screw holding a brass uh, piece and over to here and it will draw on the aperture pin so there's only four screws one here one here there and there and the last one here so remember that I just put some red well mark uh, to make it easier for you to see what's actually happened. So I would just use a um, flathead screwdriver, which is something 2.4 millimeter or so. And uh, I can see somebody else has been here trying to come in to this lens. Of course, I have. I already had a sneak peek in this uh, this lens just to be sure how things actually are put together. Because then it will, it was possibly, it was a possibility for me to make a film. So there is only four screws from the mount. Keep that in mind. So, and you have to uh, do some work around here and move it a little. So if we hold it like this, the brass piece and the spring has to go down here. And the pin from the back of the mount 
is what you can see here is going down here so it looks like this and the pin itself here the fork look alike has to also go down here and catch in the the pin that moves the blades actually so that's so keep in mind that not put the lens directly on the on the table this is rubber so it doesn't do that much harm but if you have a some I mean some other stuff you work on uh, the lens element is almost I mean it is it is out right outside the uh, the edge of the uh, aperture ring and it cannot go any further but of course it can't go any back so be careful well that was part of it I do not uh, I mean I cannot disassemble the full focus system at the moment so but <clears throat> to to take out the the lens block assembly we need to take off the front ring here and but first we need to take the the retaining ring here at the front first and uh, we can do so <clears throat> I can use some of my rubber tools which is quite handy and uh, sometimes it works really good and sometimes not so let's see it hey. it's not really good maybe I tighten it too much so this is uh, another tool which I actually get in the plumber section of the hardware store this has a number Falu number eight five two five nine and something seventy dash seventy five slash forty dash fifty an RSK three hundred and ten. I don't know if the correct number, but it's very sticky rubber. So let's give it a go, and it fits absolutely perfect here. So um, very handy. So <clears throat> it goes really a good tool. Of course, we will need it sooner. So here it is: the front retaining ring. And um, then we have to go put the lens on near end here, which is 0 0.6 meter. And there is a thing here, there should, I mean, there should be a small set screw here, but uh, there wasn't anything here. So, uh, but if there was, I should use a 1.2 millimeter flathead screwdriver to unscrew it there. And it also has to be unscrewed by some rubber tool. Uh, and it's quite handy in the plumber section in the hardware store. This is a, I think it is something like. 40 millimeter or so and it's quite handy to just put it on here and unscrew it when it's loose it should be quite easy to take it out now now we actually have the full access to the lens assembly and it can just pop out here so it is 
and here we have the aperture pin that actually moved the pin here as you can see so that's it there are some trays of oil so uh, well but we actually need some rubber gloves and I always will use my very handy <coughs> garden um, rubber gloves which is quite handy <coughs> so to, we take the front lens group first and uh, I will go in here from the front okay I already lose it but I can use my uh, my very handy cone rubber tools to unscrew it it fits absolutely perfect here just unscrew it it did not sit that tight but um, keep in mind that it can sit tight so then we have full access to the front element and um, well maybe I should do it in a different way and just take out the whole front group so I will put this ring on again and uh, do like this just take off the front lens group um, we take the uh, let's see where we go I'll just use a rubber tool and put it on the front actually the front part here and if it's too tight can be because sometimes they use thread lock on the uh, on the parts and if it they have done so we'll need some nail polish remover with acetone quite handy and very effective for that so we will just um, add some only in the edge of the and simply just do so and then it should be very easy to unscrew <laughs> Now, so we have it. So here we have the front lens group, and the uh, I draw this from this one. So it looks like this here. There are two groups here. One is the front lens, and the second group is the two lenses cemented together and uh, so it's impossible to to clear the lens uh, surface between the two lens so but uh, yeah and of course to get the uh, front ring off again I will just use my rubber tool here So 
so. <coughs> Just have not necessary to use the glove right now. And um, then I can just pop the lens out and do so. Now, now it's time to have some gloves on. I mean, thin. You just do the actual cleaning. Now, if the one thing I should mention, when you, um, whenever you have take this ring off, you could, I mean, if this front section sits too tight, there are actually two holes here, which you can use a, um, lens spinner there's a hole there and a hole over there so I could actually use a lens spinner to unscrew it if it was way too tight but still try the uh, rubber tool first it will not harm anything now um, let's see what's happened here. So, and where is the dust actually? Is it on the front or is it on this lens here? Well, as you can see, there is a lot. Hmm. Hopefully it's not between the two lenses, but there must be something else. Well, the front lens it does not really look that good, but uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. So first I will do the... Um, The actual front part and I need to put the lens on something that is almost the same size as the lens itself and something to put it on so now it's safer and then we need some solvent. For this I will use uh, Eclipse and some peg pads like this here. Non-abrasive wipes, <coughs> which is uh, really, really good. So I will just give the lens a go on the, on the front and after that the back of the front lens. So I put my wipe, wipe on and just use, it has to be wet, like this. And just do some circles, bigger and bigger and bigger, and then out. Does it help? Hmm. Don't know yet. There's still some something. <clears throat> but let's see what's happened when we do it on the back. And again.
Hmm. Well, there's still something on the front. But um, I will give it another go. But this time I will use uh, Light of Flute. Just to see, can it do any difference? And again. not that good but um, let's put it aside for now and then we can do the the inner front lens group <clears throat> and there was also something and I guess just my guess is on the inside of the lens but to take it out, we need some um, nail polish remover because they have add some thread logger. As you can see, there's something here, but they used to put it in the in the hole here, and it can be difficult to unscrew it. So I just add a little nail polish remover and add it in this hole holding the lens simply like this and just uh, almost fill it up with some now if it sits way too tight, one can use the rubber cones here, like put the front section in here and the back in a the smaller cone and then, then just um, use it as a rubber tool. <coughs> Quite handy. Then it will come off. <clears throat> Not that hard. And now um, I need to put the lens on something. So I could, let's see what I could. We just used. This one here, maybe it's not the best one, but let's see what we can. I mean, the surface is quite strong. It's not that soft. So I will just add it here. Well, be careful because the lens is put together with some kind of thread lock or lack lack way to um, prevent the lens from falling out and yeah and I really do not have one that is that well we'll just give this okay it fits perfect So I can do the inside here first and never wipes. And then I will just use the clips. Like 
here. It's really good, I guess so. Let's see what's happening if I turn it over and do it again on the front. Now, let's see something here. Did you see the difference? Well, there are some marks here. So I will give it another go. if it can do any difference hopefully is much better. Of course there's some some piece of dust or whatever it is. So and let's put it back in again. has to say click so <laughs> and then I can uh, I can just put in the the front lens there's nothing really I can do with this at the moment And for doing that, I will just try this. <clears throat> Lens suction tool, which I hopefully can lift in the lens. this and here we are then I can just add the nameplate and then we are done on the front So, I mean, it is better, but uh, still the front has some issues which I uh, cannot do anything about. So I'll just put this in again and um, then it will be a lot easier to take more clear photos with this lens. I mean, actually the front. So, now, turn it over and um, we will go to the back session, section, back lens group. And it's also put together in different parts. 
and to unscrew this section here there's actually two sections here I will um, again use some rubber tools and gloves which is really really handy when unscrew all lenses so um, the whole back lens group here is uh, held in place by um, by some thread lock which you can see here there is some some uh, left over which we have to soften a little and again some nail polish remover and um, I will add not in the very back but the next one just in the hole so you can soften it a little not too much then it should be <coughs> possible to unscrew it so this is how it is and I will just close the aperture because uh, this is uh, one part of it there's another section which is this lens and uh, just for the overview this is how the back lens group looks like so if you see here this is this is how it should look the very back is here and so it is so let's have a look inside the um, the plate here which hold the uh, the lens here and again more thread locks I mean not thread lock but nail polish remover and be careful not too much there's a hole here tiny and it's the only one and it's here and just add a little as it can come in sometimes you have to use more and sometimes you have to use less well to unscrew this part I can use my comb here it fits absolutely perfect and then press <coughs> and it goes and I just add a mark where where the lens actually is put correct in there's one here and the one here so when it's put correct in it'll go like this just to be sure you put things back in correct And here we are. So um, <clears throat> this lens is one of the cemented lens, which is uh, holding place by a retaining ring. So, um, and I need to also soften it with some. Where did it go? Uh, leave that one. 
just to put things on and of course more thread on logger and just add a little only on the edge of the retaining ring sometimes on both sides and it will be good then I can use a lens spinner quite handy so it fit it can unscrew it can sit tight and take care of the lens element surface and off it goes so when I have uh, loosened the the um, retaining ring it should be possible to just use some rubber tool to unscrew the rest and off it goes now time to do some cleaning of this section and for that we need to pop the lens out and here we are so this is how it looks and for the overview we'll just um, do the drawing here so it is like this as you can see now um, I will just clean the the inner part here first and put the lens on something that fits almost so and more tissues pipes whatever it calls So hopefully it turned out to be very good. And then the front. There's some uh, fragments here. I don't know what it is, but uh, see if it can come away wow it looks like something really clear something but if wait it's way much better so that's amazing let's do it again
I think it looks like it helps. Yeah. I think it will it will work. Okay. This is absolutely great. <laughs> Interesting. Now I will just uh, put it back in again and um, add the retaining ring. Of course, where did it go? It's like uh, hmm, here. <coughs> so And then I can just add the lens back in place. Like this. And here is my mark. There it fits. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe I have to do it again if there I miss some some uh, dust thingy. Well, now we have the the back, the very back uh, lens group, which we need to also unscrew. I cannot come into the back, the very back lens, because it's uh, put in tight. Or, but what I can is there is a um, retaining ring in here, which you can probably see here. There's a notch here and a notch over here. And of course, again, they used thread lock. So what I'm going to do is put some um, nail polish remover on the last hole here, just a little. And let it suck in. And then let it stay a little. And then it should be possible with some rubber tools just to make it easier. The cones are really, really handy. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> um, and then my lens spinner, which I already put in position in the correct distance and then it can sit in pretty tight so here we are the problem with this uh, back lens is not really the back the very back the most back lens it's the, um, the next lens, which have a lot of dust. Where did it go? Can we use this one? It's 
so it's free. And to make it easier, just pop the turn the lens over and let the the lens element just like this click, and then we have it free. A lot of fingerprint in here. Oh, not really. Yeah, there's some, but it's only on the on the very back. But anyway. So let's see what this lens actually looks. Oh, a lot of dust or haze or whatever it is. Um, but um, let's give it a go. And I will use this very handy rubber tool. To serve. So, and we need some more wipes. Just do some It looks better, but um, what if I do the other side? Will it be much better? Hmm. I guess so. But let's see how it turns out. something well already a lot I mean a lot better mm. we'll go do it again sometimes it's not good enough first time so <clears throat> And if I do some drawing after that, would it help? Actually, yes. There's some, some dust in the old hair, more hair from the box. Sometimes they are really, really difficult to get off. Now, how does it? Well, it looks really good. There's something. It must be on the... Uh, out of sight. So I will just give it another go. Amazing piece of glass. So, 
but how does the uh, the actual most back lens look well I can just clean the <clears throat> the back and see how much different it is you see there's not only one solution for cleaning lenses yeah there are some but it's not dust it's actually from the the uh, back lens here which have a lot of marks and everything yeah maybe there are some inside let's have a look this time I will just use a good lens cloth because it's difficult to to go in there so I will just use a good lens cloth and then uh, see how it turns out to be well didn't make any change still the um, the uh, the back lens who has all the the bad thing so um, so but let's put things back in again and for this I will use a another rubber tool which is quite handy Just get rid of all those hairs and Is there any? It looks pretty good. And then the retaining ring will come on. Let's see if this can do. Oh, it fits okay. Ah, well, we need the uh, lens spinner. Put a finger in between them. So it so so it is, and then it's actually time to put things back in again, and uh, hopefully it will be better. Where did you went? So. Any small hair? No, it looks okay. So let's see. And when we open up the lens, how does it look now? Well, except for the front, there's a huge difference. Still, the front and the back lens is not really good, but uh, it turns out to be 
a lot better. So um, now it's time to put the lens assembly back in again. Just clear the table. Now in just need to tighten this and the uh, back here and again this is really handy ah way too big so uh, I'll just, just use the, the cone not that cone but this one yeah look fine a little too much like this and this back part <laughs> so and then time to put it in again so we have the pin here and put the lens on to something aperture 16 or so and um, the pin has to catch this thingy here like uh, like this one and then put it in keep an eye on it will catch and of course the uh, the screw here is which is not a screw it's just some adjustment thingy this one this is for the uh, focus ring but the other one here is just a pin that that uh, say um so the lens block actually goes in correct so do so and the front ring not with a set screw in this lens but uh, for, me, for me it doesn't matter a rubber tool to tighten it and the front focus ring has to be put in and my orange tool here this is quite handy you see the front is way too big for the cone so uh, but now we have um, <coughs> we're almost there mm -hmm. so if I put the lens to near end so it's easier to catch the the pin here control the movement of the aperture so it's there see the pin down here and the fork has to catch it which sometimes can be a little problem but uh, as you put it to near end it will be a lot easier take care of the spring this spring has not had a good life but it still work so I put it in and you probably can see what's going on there we are so I just need to put it in and catch the the fork, and of course the um, the brass and the spring here have to. Um, so you do it like this, give it a little movement, and then it clicks in place. So the only thing is back is uh, I could add some Loctite thread lock 222 
which is the softest, is purple. So by unscrewing the, take off the lid, do so, and do so. There's a double arrow here, which you can see. So when putting on the lid, it will close. And when you open, it will not open it automatic, but you have to lift it. So sometimes it can dry out in the tip the end of the tip so uh, and just add a little piece of paper so oh it's way too much mm. well we need it anyway so just a little that's enough And just put it one screw here, and then here we are. Then we are free to. It's only four screws, so it's not that hard. Sometimes a magnetic screwdriver can be very handy and sometimes not. So here we are. Come on. So goes and so we are almost there come on <laughs> not this one but the next one The screws are really not good, but so and this is how it actually looks right now. So that was actually all for now. Uh, so hope you enjoy the the content and maybe it's possible for you to do it. It's not that hard. So, bye-bye.